LTV's Evening Update. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with the latest news from Israel. Well, the IDF does not mess around with threats to Israel's security, and now they're about to build a massive new barrier to combat Hamas's terror tunnels from Gaza. This enormous underground wall is the first ever of its kind in Israel. Hamas's terror tunnels have been a major threat to Israeli security and have been cited as one of the main causes of Israel's involvement in the most recent war with Gaza in 2014. But clearly, the IDF is taking their efforts to destroy the tunnels to a whole new level. For the past couple of months, Israel has set up concrete factories on the Gaza border to begin construction on a massive concrete wall deep under the ground around the Israel-Gaza border. The mission is clear to search and destroy any Hamas tunnels that may be funneling terror into Israel. The wall is being outfitted with high-definition sensors to detect the presence of any tunnels that may be nearby and will even extend to underwater areas of the border. The three billion shekel project has already contracted foreign workers from Spain, Moldova and asylum seekers from Africa and will be overseen by Israeli constructors for 24 hours a day except on Shabbat until the wall is finished. Even at the risk of angering Hamas into starting another war, the IDF clearly thinks this is a mission worth fighting for and promises that no matter what, the wall will be built at any cost. The UN has just revealed that Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has been dramatically cutting back aid for six citizens of Gaza who are hoping to get medical help. This is in a move to put pressure on Hamas. So I guess the possibility of a reconciliation deal between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas may not be as likely as we thought. In the past, the Palestinian Authority has reserved money for Gazans hoping to get medical care outside of Gaza, where hospitals and facilities are severely lacking. But a report from the World Health Organization has now revealed that the PA has slashed these funds by nearly 80% since last year. In June of 2016, for example, almost 2,000 Gazans were given financial aid to travel for medical treatment. But in June of this year, less than 500 were allowed to take the trip. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza is at its all-time worst, a situation that Abbas seems to be taking advantage of for his own political gain. The terror group Hamas seized control of the Gaza Strip from Abbas's government in 2007, and in an effort to force Hamas into a deal, the Palestinian president has been cutting aid to Gaza. First, it was cutting money for power plants, plunging Gaza into an energy crisis which is still ongoing. And now, it's clearly using medical care as a political weapon. The UN is condemning Abbas for slowing proper medical care at the very least, but the Palestinian Authority is denying that anything's changed in their policy. Unfortunately, it's the average citizens of Gaza who are caught in the middle. The UN has just revealed that Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has been dramatically cutting back aid for six citizens of Gaza who are hoping to get medical help. This is in a move to put pressure on Hamas. So I guess the possibility of a reconciliation deal between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas may not be as likely as we thought. In the past, the Palestinian Authority has reserved money for Gazans hoping to get medical care outside of Gaza, where hospitals and facilities are severely lacking. But a report from the World Health Organization has now revealed that the PA has slashed these funds by nearly 80% since last year. In June of 2016, for example, almost 2,000 Gazans were given financial aid to travel for medical treatment. But in June of this year, less than 500 were allowed to take the trip. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza is at its all-time worst, a situation that Abbas seems to be taking advantage of for his own political gain. The terror group Hamas seized control of the Gaza Strip from Abbas's government in 2007, and in an effort to force Hamas into a deal, the Palestinian president has been cutting aid to Gaza. First, it was cutting money for power plants, plunging Gaza into an energy crisis which is still ongoing, and now it's clearly using medical care as a political weapon. The UN is condemning Abbas for slowing proper medical care at the very least, but the Palestinian Authority is denying that anything's changed in their policy. Unfortunately, it's the average citizens of Gaza who are caught in the middle. Well, it's finally happened. The Silicon Valley giant Intel has closed its deal to buy the Israeli company Mobileye. And now they've just announced plans for a new fleet of self-driving cars. 
Intel has acquired Mobileye for a whopping $15 billion. The Israeli startup specializes in driver assistance systems and will allow Intel to roll out fully autonomous vehicles later this year for testing in Europe, Israel and the United States. The fleet should have more than 100 vehicles and by testing them in real world conditions, Mobileye's co-founder Amnon Chashua is hoping to accelerate their development. Most major automakers have been stepping up their efforts to release self-driving cars because they could end up eliminating the majority of road accidents. That's all for now, so thanks for tuning in. I'm Natasha Kirchak, and see you next time with more news from Israel.